Good morning. Today I want to talk about the first two verses of the Dharmapada. Now I know that some of you will be thinking, well I've talked about those a lot already in the past, and I have. But actually there's always more that can be said. And I'd like to take a slightly different approach to those um, two verses. So first of all the verses. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. It is founded on our thoughts and made up of our thoughts. If one speaks or acts with an impure thought, suffering follows just as the wheel follows the hoof of the beast that draws the wagon. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. It is founded on our thoughts and made up of our thoughts. If one speaks or acts with a pure thought, happiness follows like a shadow that never leaves us. So those are the verses. And, you know, on the surface of it, it could, we could read that as saying, you know, you must always act skillfully and never act unskillfully. And, you know, if you've got anything impure in your mind, you know, you're going to suffer. And of course, that is true to some extent. That is true. But I don't think we should use those verses to beat ourselves up because actually every single one of us does have impure thoughts. They may not be dreadful thoughts, or they may be. Sometimes I'm quite shocked at what's in my mind. But the main thing is to notice, to be aware, to be curious about what actually is in our minds. So the first principle of Buddhism is to know what's in our minds, to actually get to know our minds. Now we can only do that if we do acknowledge that there's going to be a mixture of what we find there. It's not all going to be pure and light and kindly and generous and compassionate. It's not going to be like that. And if we think it should be, then actually it will give us pain to think that we're not like that. And that often leads to projection, a projection that other people's minds are a lot purer than our own that other people are kinder and more compassionate and think beautiful thoughts. So we have to acknowledge where we're starting from. In other words, we have to acknowledge our humanness, our, our human capacity for all sorts of states of mind. So that's really, really important because actually we can't meditate unless we come to it with an attitude of being interested in what's there not merely hoping that we're just going to have these wonderful calm states of mind if we learn to meditate. It's not that they are not available, certainly they are. But first of all, we need to find out what's really there. Can we be really honest with ourselves? Can we allow all the rubbish and the, and the dross to come up as well as those more open expansive warm feelings and that's often why I don't talk about metta in terms of we are cultivating something you know we often talk in terms of cultivating metta and I try and avoid that term because it almost suggests like we better you know get down to some hard work of changing our mind for something more positive and I just don't think it happens like that we really have to know what's there and accept what's there because that is the start of having a sense of humour about it all. It's, it's, it's quite funny, isn't it, that actually we cause ourselves suffering by some of what we think about. So one thing I've noticed in myself is that as I'm getting older and I've already got a physical disability, I can fall into catastrophe thinking. It's like, oh, how many more years will I be on my feet with crutches or... Will I end up in a wheelchair and maybe that's only round the corner and, and then I'll be dependent on other people. You know, it's easy for me to run along those lines. And so I have to be clear about, ah, that's interesting. I'm causing myself suffering. I'm doing it to myself. I really can't know the answer to those questions, but I'm already anticipating the answer and I'm getting concerned about it. So immediately... I'm creating suffering. So one of the things I wanted to talk about here was 
taking responsibility. And that means taking responsibility for how we lead our lives and what we're feeding ourselves with. So I know sometimes I've said, look, we feed ourselves with food all the time, often rubbish food, yeah? Um, hopefully not. I think, you know, a lot of us have learned now that actually um, Big Macs and all that, they're not really very good for us. And um, yeah, I think we're much more concerned nowadays actually with trying to have a healthy diet. But anyway, I, I'm my diet is great in some ways, you know, I'm vegetarian, I'm not, I'm not vegan. And I... I've got a sweet tooth that's got worse as I've got older. And so I eat um, things with sugar in them. Okay, the doorbell's going. I'm going to stop there for a minute. No, Bodhi Vadra is going to the door. I'm not going to stop. So um, all part of life, the door is going. Fuji's running around the floor chasing a ball. Fine. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about taking responsibility for what is in our mind. So how, would, how do we do that when I've already said, thank you, Fuge, when I've already said that actually there will be a variety of states of mind and that the more we are aware and accept those, the easier it will be. So what we're accepting there is our humanness, our human nature, but that doesn't mean that we do nothing about it. So one of the practices that I go on about quite a lot is guarding the doors of the senses. So, yeah, we've got eyes, we've got ears, we've got nose, we've got mouth, we've got skin, we've got a mind. All these are considered senses in Buddhism. And, you know, if we indulge ourselves in particular ways, then we cannot expect to have um, beautiful states of mind. So, you know, we start to make choices, I think, when we practice. And some of those choices are around, um, well, for example, um, food. If you go into a supermarket, well, if you go into a supermarket at all, you know, it's designed to make you, um, to make you buy rubbish, basically. The rubbish food is cheaper. The chocolates all by the um, checkout. So for me, I prefer to do an online shop so that I just get what I need and I don't look at other things. Because I know that if I go into a supermarket, I will. I'll get drawn to other things. So I'm guarding the senses. I'm guarding, I'm guarding my eyes there. And... Um, I guard my mind by choosing what I watch, for example, or how much news I take in. So we can do things like, you know, making sure that we don't feed our mind as we feed our body. Um, yeah, basically, we don't realise, we know we're feeding our body, you know, because we, we see what we eat. But we're not so aware, I think, of what we're feeding our mind with all the time. What we choose to look at on the internet. Which films we choose to go to. What we choose to read. And it all has an effect. It's all sitting there in our memories. Sometimes in our unconscious memories, but it's all there. So we start making choices, and this is part of taking responsibility. Responsibility for what we are feeding our mind with, for what we're looking at, for what we're reading. And noticing, does it make a difference? That's the thing. We're only doing it as an experiment. We're not doing it because we've got a fixed attitude, but because the Buddha said... You know, try some things, see if they work. What's the effect? Notice the effect. So anyway, that's what I've been thinking about in relation to those first two verses. All that we are is the result of what we put in our mind. But that doesn't mean that we're going to criticise what's there. Because if we do, 
then actually we are not going to be able to develop meta. We are not going to be able to feel the warmth of, of um, just being okay with ourselves, with being all right, with being accepting that our human nature means that we've got all sorts in our mind. So I'll leave it there for today. Bye for now.